So this migrant crisis is uh, becoming more and more interesting every day. So apparently in El Paso, there were um, some migrants waiting on the Mexican side of the border and in front of them were members of the Texas National Guard. There was another gate after that gate that had the border patrol. So what ended up happening was the migrants, I guess after becoming restless, or uh, I guess they decided that uh, <laughs> they would uh, bum rush the gate and they did. It was caught on film and now it is the um, it, it, it is the soup du jour for a lot of the uh, media networks, especially the conservative media networks, showing how out of control this situation is. Now, here's the thing. And I know this is a controversial issue, the migrant crisis or all of these people who largely appear to be military age men. And uh, it causes a lot of people a lot of disturbance, especially we consider we don't know who these men are. We largely know that they're coming from third world countries and we're not talking about rocket scientists that are that are entering into our our country. We're talking about a lot of uh, desperate people. And we're also talking about a lot of uh, criminals. There is rumors or there are rumors that you have some of these countries like Venezuela opening up their jails to uh, un it, it let these folks basically walk themselves up to the border and, and cross without being properly filtered. You also have Joe Biden and his administration literally flying people from their country, flying to the United States. So what, what that lets me know and what it should let you know is that this is done with the permission and the consent of, 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 of our politicians. So what does that mean? That means they want it to happen. They want it to happen. And the question you have to ask yourself is why? Why do they want this to happen? What is the, what is the benefit? Well, to the average American citizen, we really can't see a benefit. And that's why you have to put yourself in the perspective, put your look at things from uh, the leadership standpoint or pretend as though you were the king and, and look at it from the king's eye or the king's view, uh, the king's point of view, or let's just say the king's eye view. What do we get from this? Well, let's think about it. We get, we're in a situation where we have an aging population. Our fertility rate is down. You have a lot of young men, young American men of all ethnicities who are feeling uh, as outcasts in society. Military enrollment is down. And the reason that is is because the overall morale of men is down. And so what better to do than instead of trying, instead of spending the money and time and making the systematic changes to satisfy this uh, group of people, i.e. Western men or American men, why not just replace them? <laughs> so yes, it's my opinion that these, uh, these guys are here at the behest of the American government to replace American men or at least fill in some gaps. Now, this may sound uh, crass, cold-blooded, but judging from or, or knowing what we know, they anticipate that there's going to be a culture clash. They anticipate that infusing another two to three million people into the United States populace every few years is going to cause some friction. On top of that, you're dealing with people who are from a different culture. They have different uh, sexual norms. They have different uh, ways of seeing the world, a different perspective of seeing the world and seeing the world. And so, yeah, 
there's some things that's going to happen. Life may might not mean as much to them as it does to us. So if someone dies uh, during the commission of a crime or if uh, some young underage girl is uh, unfortunately uh, essayed, and I'll say essay because I don't want to get uh, anybody offended. I try to uh, make sure I conform with, uh, with, with what's necessary to make sure the point is called. But bottom line is um, they anticipate that's going to happen. From the king's point of view, from the leadership's point of view, from the president's point of view, that is a small pi price to pay to fill this country up with more men that it could use to help pay taxes, to help fight wars, to help build buildings, to help maintain this country, you see? And so they're willing to do that. Do they care about you as the American public, as an individual? Do you think they care if you suffer as a result? No, because that is not, that is not their major concern. Their major concern is keeping power and making money and maintaining the status quo. So what does that mean? Well, that means if a couple of Americans get unalived because uh, a migrant was having a bad day, oh well. If uh, you know a large percentage of these migrants are uh, here and they have criminal records and a propensity to commit violent criminal acts against other uh, American citizens or against American citizens, oh well. It, it, it's, it's the cost to pay for progress. The irony here is you have a lot of people of all races, right, angry, but when you look at the vast majority of these migrants, many of them come from third world countries. They are brown people. They are black people. They are yellow people. They're Asian. They're Hispanic. They're, uh, they're Middle Eastern they are they're, they're African and I think that a lot of uh, I think that a lot of white Americans are not only shocked and offended but they're coming to the realization that uh, this whole notion of white supremacy racism was just a lie <laughs> fed to uh, uh, poor whites to appease them at least as far as the, the leadership is concerned. In other words, what I'm saying is, they told you that. They gave you these little trinkles, uh, trinkets and benefits just so that you could act as a buffer between them and the poor uh, and, the, and, and, the, and the darker races. They tell you, oh yeah, you're better. You're better because you're white. But at the end of the day, they care as little about the typical white person as they do the typical person of color. They just don't. With them, it's all about maintaining power and control. And, and, and if they can use you in the process, they will. And so you have a lot of white Americans upset because they felt they're being duped. Because the true leaders, the true rulers of the world, use white supremacy racism like they use any other religion. They use it to control people. They use it to, uh, or when I say religion, I should say standardized religion or uh, orthodox religion, and that's all white supremacy is. It's a, it's, it's a hierarchy of views and needs and perspectives uh, that govern how people uh, operate, and so they use it just like they use any other doctrine, whether it be religious or uh, political, et cetera. And so white folks are feeling like, man, you're letting all these black folks and these brown people and these Asian people into our country, and this is our country, and this is more of the browning of America. But the white elite don't care. The rich elite don't care. They don't care about you. And it's about time that the average white person woke up and realized that you have a lot more in common with, especially if you're poor. You have a lot more in common with poor black and brown people and Asian people than you do with those rich white elites. Now, given they will give you some benefits, but that's only to keep you complacent. It's not, yeah, okay, you, the police pull you over. You may or may, may not get a traffic ticket. Okay. You get less time in jail sometimes, even though there are more white people in jail than, than any other group. Bottom line is you've been lied to, and now it's right there in your face, and you can't ignore it. And so a lot of white people are up in arms. 
The other thing you'll find is that you have a lot of black people realizing very quickly that they're bringing these people over here to replace us. Reason being, and when I say black, I'm talking about foundational black Americans, FBA, those who can trace their roots back to uh, the southern Mississippi, uh, uh, mid-Atlantic, 1860, pre-1860 time period when uh, we were still an enslaved population largely, even though there were free blacks who were uh, in, in, other, in all over the South and the North and the Mid-Atlantic. But the bottom line is we see that, hey, you know what, we've become too much of a problem. So what they're going to do is open the gates uh, to the southern border. They're going to fly folks over. They're going to let them walk over so that they can replace us so they don't have to deal with this anymore. They're going to make us politically uh, 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 irrelevant, because they're going to quickly give these people the right to vote. Um, they're going to allow these folks to come into the, to the armed forces. They're going to draft them into the, they're going to allow them to join the police force. They're going to give them the right to vote, even if that is only on local elections. And so in doing so, they, for the most part, will drown our political voice out. And by doing that, we will literally have little to no political influence. And along with the political influence, soon will go the financial influence. Because as these people are here in the United States, and any time, you got to understand that America is is the reason it is the shining city on the hill is because it's the only place in the world where you can go and literally go from dead broke to rich in one lifetime. Oftentimes in a very short time period, relatively speaking. So these immigrants, these illegal aliens, these illegal migrants, they're going to begin to make money. They're going to generate and they're going to have spending power. They're going to purchase cars. They're going to purchase gasoline. They're going to purchase houses. And in a consumer economy, that's good for the economy. And that's what the leadership is concerned about. They're, they're looking for people who will work for little or nothing, or, or at least less than a typical American. Their jobs a typical American won't do. And he won't do them, or not for a certain. And then there are other jobs he won't do for uh, unless he's getting paid an arm and a leg. Whereas you got these migrants who'll do it for cheap. Their jobs, their most jobs, there aren't really any jobs these migrants won't do, and the jobs that Americans want to do for a, a large amount of money, the migrants will do for a lot less. So as far as the uh, elite are concerned, it's a win-win situation. We get cheap labor. Uh, we, we get to replace these headaches that we call American citizens of all colors. And the truth is, we don't really care what color they are. As long as we get bodies over here paying into the tax base so that we can maintain our cushy position. Because as it is right now, we got a very low population rate. And then you got a certain class of people. A lot of Americans are making money. They're moving to the West Coast. They're moving to the East Coast. They're moving down South. If you go to the Midwest, it is largely empty. And so if they can get folks to come fill in that empty heartland of ours to, 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 to operate on these farms, to help these uh, uh, global elites continue making their money, to work in our coal mines and do this labor that we don't want to do, they will because they don't really care about you. And that's the thing that all Americans should realize. This is happening. And let me tell you something else. You vote for Donald Trump in 2024. He lasts four years. He's able to shut down the uh, 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 the immigration process. He's able to evict to uh, uh, send two million immigrants back home. How long does that process take? A year, year and a half, two years, three years, and then he's out of office, and the floodgates are open again. So this is something that is going to be ongoing and continuous. We're, and, 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 and the reason it's happening is because you have these businesses which invite, and the politicians, both Republican and Democrat, who invite these folks to come to our country in order to replace us. They don't care about the typical American. Black, white, Hispanic, Asian, or otherwise. They are, they, 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 we have to maintain a class of people at the bottom who are willing to work for little or nothing so we can maintain our position here at the top uh, of the pyramid, if you will. uh, And so that's what you see happening. So 
you know, I know it sounds hopeless, but they're working them into society. They're giving them, I mean, there was a judge out of Chicago that said illegal immigrants have the right to carry guns. That should scare the crap out of anybody. You're an illegal immigrant. <laughs> you don't even, we don't know where you came from. We don't know what your criminal record is. And we have a federal judge out of Chicago who should know better who says that, uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, a violation of the uh, Constitution to prevent this person from uh, carrying a firearm. Right. Yet we have people who are American citizens who may have may not have a criminal record, even if it was a nonviolent offense. They can't carry a record. We got 18-year-olds eight, who can get drafted into the military. They can't carry uh, firearms in many states. Just think about that. Men who have been accused of DV, even if it's a, a, a totally bogus claim, they can't carry firearms. So you need to think about that. You need to understand what's going on as, as Americans in general. And I, I, you need to understand that it's really us against those who are at the top. You know, it's really us waking up and i'm glad to see black americans are waking up i it's unfortunate that it took such an extreme crisis and such an in your face move by these by the elite to show black people that the democrat party is not your friend now don't get me wrong the republican party is not your friend either and somewhere between my goodness to 1990 and 2010 or 2011 or 12, the Democrat Party became the political party of the elite and the Republican Party became the political party of the working class. And it used to be re the reverse. The Republicans were the party of big business, but somewhere between then and now, uh, it, I, I guess because of Barack Obama, it became the party of the elite. And you got to understand, they don't care about any of us. And I'm glad to see black American men especially waking up and, and realizing that it's time to vote our interest, not vote party line. I will be voting for Donald Trump in 2024, largely because I like the, generally speaking, I like that the tax, uh, that the Republicans are low tax. And uh, for the most part, they've been anti-war, <laughs> uh, you know, that's what I like. I mean, the last two um, Democrat presidents have either continued wars or initiated wars. So, you know, I'm, that's my thing. But you're welcome to do whatever you choose to do. But either way, keep your eyes open. I want you guys to pay attention to what's going on. Um, you know, everybody thinks this is by accident. Oh, these migrants are just coming. It's a, no, the, 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 the government, Joe Biden's administration, they called them up here. They basically got on a bullhorn and, and, and broadcasted all around the world and said, our gates are open. Come on in. We don't care where you're from. We don't care what kind of uh, criminal record you have. We don't care, uh, uh, you know, if you can read. We don't care if you're coming over here with any skills. Just come on over here and, uh, and, 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 and let's fill up America. Okay, we don't what care what kind of caliber, we, and we'll give you housing, we'll give you free money. Uh, we got these places called sanctuary cities. You can come crash. And we'll put you up in the best hotels, feed you three meals a day, uh, and uh, you know if you commit a few crimes, it's okay. You can flip. You can give a double bird to the police on camera uh, in a Tupac esque sort of way, and we'll let you out of jail. You know, we'll even give you. Uh, we'll let, bring your family over, have kids, and uh, just come benefit from all the sacrifices that all these other Americans uh, have done. And, 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 and they better like it, because if they don't like it, then, uh, you know, oh, well, whatever, we'll call them racist and uh, bigots and tell them they need to be open-minded. <laughs> and that's what we're dealing with now. And, and so now there's been a big wake-up call for basically all of America. But, you know, at the end of the day, what I do see is Americans coming together of all colors and ethnicities saying enough is enough. It's too in your face. 
uh, and we can't stay asleep. So, I mean, it's good seeing white Americans, black Americans, Asian Americans, Hispanic Americans. I see it's good to see us coming together saying, no, you're not, you're not going to do that again. You know, you're, you're, you're not going to do that to us. And for those of you all who are saying, well, you know, you shouldn't complain. This is a nation of immigrants. Well, it's a nation of immigrants for most, for black, black Americans, foundational black Americans. We're a nation of captives who've stayed and we've earned the right to stay. So that's what makes us very unique in this conversation. It's really not much you can say to us because our parents, grandparents, great, great grandparents didn't uh, immigrate to this country willingly. We were forced to the hulls of ships, brought over here in chains, forced to work for hundreds of years, had to endure Jim Crow, uh, had to endure the in industrial um, uh, prison complex, the so-called war on drugs, and everything else uh, that we've had to deal with. And during that time period, we worked, we helped build this country. On top of that, we fought and died in every major war this country has had, World War Revolutionary, even before it was a country, World War I, War of 1812, Civil War, uh, World War I, uh, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, one, two, three. And uh, so we've earned our right to be here. But nevertheless, irrespective of our different backgrounds, I think we're beginning to recognize that our interests as American are more are common. We have a common interest as America to keep our borders secure, to make sure that our, 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 our children, our daughters, especially and our women, are, are not um, subject to being attacked by these men who have these different cultural values for women, uh, that we shouldn't be ousted and replaced by men who come from different countries whose loyalties may be to those countries. And uh, we shouldn't have to have those sort of men uh, in our military, because again, that's what happened to Rome. Rome began to bring these foreign men who had maybe had animosity or disloyalty towards Rome. And eventually those, the, they took that training and they began to use it against, um, uh, 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 against Rome itself. And so that's kind of what we're looking at, you know, and, and those with an, those with, with a, even a, a faint understanding of history can recognize that this is what's happening. They're basically trying to make us um, unnecessary. They're trying to make the, the, the common American citizen, they're trying to replace the common American citizen, the normal everyday American citizen. They're trying to, it's gonna make your life a lot more difficult. And they're doing it because, you know, they want a, a larger tax base. They want uh, uh, more cooperative workers and underlings. <laughs> this proletariat class, quote unquote, has gotten a little too uppity. So we're going to replace them, we're going to make it more difficult for them. And so I guess I'm saying all this to say what you see with your own eyes is the truth. Believe what you see. It, it is what you think it is. Um, and so, you know, I want you all to be conscious and make sure you do what you have to do and vote your interests when it's time to vote. Uh, also begin to recognize that you're not obligated to support this um, and, and you shouldn't feel bad about yourself if you're against this illegal immigration because this is exactly what you think it is. These folks are here to try to, uh, you know, fulfill the needs of these major corporations who want cheap labor, inexpensive labor. They want employ employees who won't complain, who won't unionize. Uh, you want politicians to, uh, you know, bring in a population of people who won't question them much. And, and who will uh, be grateful in, in return for allowing them to stay here for free and give them all these goodies. Uh, they'll vote for them for another 30 or 40 years. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, you see what see what's happening. They're trying to replace you.